The first map that we have in our Pros vs. Terran here is going to be Frost, so let's jump right into it and have a quick look who's going to take map number one. Starting to the bottom left, we have Asan, the Protoss player here starting in blue. Let's see what he can do. He also played in a few of the uh, Aces RGs in the past and did very well there. Was going up against Teja in a final where he lost, took second place. Now he's starting uh, to against the Terran player that starts at the top right. Cross position for Team Millennium, it is 4GG. You can follow him on Twitter, at 4GG. The other is uh, at SC2San. Now that should be a really, really good game between the two of them, I feel. Like, we saw already a couple of Terran vs. Protoss today where Elfie was playing against Apocalypse. Apocalypse, by the way, now in the group able to take down uh, uh, Patience. So already getting another win in the same matchup. But I feel this is going to be a very different ball of games that we have right now in this match. So what do you think who has the better chances here, yeah, from your opinion? We can still hear you, production. Yeah. We can still hear you, production. Okay. Uh, who has the better chances? I think I think 4GG has a pretty unique style against Protoss. He mixes in Hellbats pretty, yeah, pretty frequently into his army composition. His strength in this matchup definitely is his macro. His micro follows that very quickly, but then his predictability is a bit his weakness. San, he's a quirky little chap. Um, that can help him. He has a lot of tricks up his sleeve in every matchup, so that is his advantage. But in pure processing power, let's say, I think 4GG has a slight lead. So let's see exactly what's going to happen here. We see a very quick nexus from San after just a gate and an assimilator. It will gain him about two probes or so and will delay his mothership core for about 50 seconds. I think it's not very good against someone who's opening Reaper. What 4GG will be looking to do here with the Reaper is kill one probe at least. He has to, otherwise he'll be at a disadvantage. If he kills two probes, that already makes San's start not worth it anymore, so to speak. So let's see exactly what happens here, what 4GG gets done with that. I mean, for now, the most important thing for 4GG with the Reaper opening is, of course, that he gets the scouting. And that's why he also sends one of his SCVs out, so he knows that his opponent doesn't spawn bottom right, and it's just now for him to go up to the top left first, and then he will of course realize where exactly San spawns, and every single second that he is delayed here, he will have to, well, he has a worse chance of actually doing damage later on, because yeah. that will of course give the units a chance to be in the game already, with the Cybernetics Core now finishing up the first stock, and the Mothership Core are going to be started very soon, and the Reaper is already on the way to the bottom left, Mothership Core is halfway done, and the first stock are now started. So let's see how much damage he can actually do here. And also, of course, get the scouting information, which is something that San is now trying to get with his own SCV, the, uh, sorry, the own probe that is going to the top right. Yeah, it was actually wrong on the Mothership Core delay. It was only 22 seconds delayed, not 40 or so. So, And with the way that the Reaper scouted, not going to the right position right away, that does make a difference here. Now, he will kill one probe, and that's a nice result, and it kind of, yeah, kind of helps to equal out the... Uh, the way that San opened already. If he gets another probe, that's great for him. And he also... No, he's not going to spot that uh, Stargate. Didn't see it. Yeah, and it's not that easy anymore on Frost to get into the base, since there isn't that much area to cover with the Stalker and Mothership Court to zone it out. What we see on the other hand for the Terran player right away is the Starpod and the first Widow Mine. So if he produces a Viking there, then he will be able to take with a simple Widow Mine shot and of course also one shot from the Viking to take out the uh, Oracle. So if he has good positioning on the Widow Mine, that would really go a long way here with the defense against an Oracle push. Yeah, but of course the first thought in his mind is that he's going to use the Widow Mine aggressively. Yeah. If we get to that awkward point where he flies his Widow Mines over as the Oracle gets into his main base, his SCVs could come under a case of a bit of wreckage. That's the thing, like, if he would have scouted the Stargate, I'm pretty sure he would have just leave everything behind and wait and defend. But right now, he's probably going to try to just move out and do damage. And that's also going to be a very funny situation, since the only chance for detection that San has is actually its set Oracle. Yeah, that's right. Now, if he makes a second Oracle, that can help in the defense. But Phoenix helps as well. You can pick up the Widow Mine before it burrows, if you see where it's going to burrow. So that definitely helps. I saw a probe <laughs> heading down there. He kind of hide it away from the Reaper. <laughs> Reaper gets killed midair. 
It's trying to jump up and at the same time melee taken out. And a very early third base here very for some. Early. Seven minutes into the game. He saw that uh, medivac with the probe. Did he see it, see it? Like, did he notice that his probe saw it? That would help him a lot. I'm actually not quite sure. Like, where is that oracle right now? It's just positioned right over here. So I feel that he's just, he's just waiting for oh, the, uh, the drop to come in. He somehow knows what's coming. Yeah. yeah very nice setup there for San. He's going to completely shut this down. Completely. He the will not lose a probe to this. Yeah, <laughs> two Phoenix is just waiting. And uh, the medivac is actually going to... He will lose, lose probes to this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 wow! <laughs> that was unexpected, to say the least. I mean, there are two phoenixes waiting for it. There's the oracle as well, and he clumps his harvesters up and loses seven probes in the process. <laughs> that could not go worse. Oh, wow! Poor for son. He had a ten worker lead, and now suddenly only seven. Yeah, that was uh, very, very... That should not have happened. Not with two Phoenixes and an Oracle and just waiting right for the drop. They were in the right place. Such a pity and tragedy. <laughs> but what a nice situation for 4 gg yeah, Definitely, that couldn't have gone better for him. He had no right to think that this would work if someone told him, look, 4 gg you've got this build. The opponent is waiting for you <laughs> with an Oracle and three Phoenixes. How do you feel about your chances? And he's like, ah... But Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that worked well for him. And that worked really well for Hassan because right now 4GG is looking for a drop and the medivac brought a lot of those marines away and suddenly the remaining marines encountered the phoenixes and the oracle and they didn't have a lot of fun in that. So the third base is going to be spotted in just a second. 4GG is moving in and he's going to kill another set of harvesters here without a problem at all. There we go. Two, three taken out. And that's, right. uh, that's gonna do quite a little bit of damage. Forces a warp in as well. The rest of the stock is on the low ground, but the Medivac is just heading straight into the main base. This is a San special strat where he goes into six, uh, six gates, Blink Stalker, after going with Oracle. I don't see anyone else do this. Yeah, and that's the power of Phoenixes, of course. Like, Phoenix is shutting down the drop play immediately. 4 gg is actually supply blocked here, and it's just now about to finish another a depot, but he's going to be supply blocked in just a few seconds once again, unless he calls down extra supply or builds another depot. And it doesn't really look like he's planning on doing that right away. So for San, we have, even though he lost a lot of units in the early game, especially, of course, to the Widow Mine, we still have a very, very significant Harvester lead. Yeah. And with the three bases that he had, an absolutely great position in the game. It's so interesting that he made that Oracle and kept it for defense. I don't think he saw the, the Starport and Factory. Which means it's like a concept defense, or he somehow knew that uh, this is how 4GG plays. But I don't know, like just he makes the Oracle for defense and revelation. Very interesting way to use it, rather than just, you know, trying to kill as many SUVs as you can, the, the old standard way. Um, yeah, interesting there. I find Phoenix is so fun to watch. They kind of fulfill a similar purpose as Mutilus do. Quick. Lose heart to Marines, but in the right situation where they outnumber the Terran, they shut down drops, they pick yeah. up, pick off some units. Very fun to watch. It's great scouting. You shut down the drop play, so you have a lot of options with the Phoenixes. They're very mobile on the map, too. But now, San in a position where this third base is really paying off for him. 4GG, of course, trying to get his own third out and also starting to saturate the mineral line. The orbital attack was already accomplished a little bit earlier. The plus one, plus one started for the Terran player. Or not only started, but about to be completed for him, too. But still, they're both battling for the map dominance. We have a lot of warp impiles for Sun already to the top left. There's has them positioned. And uh, one drop again at the bottom right, already active. So far, not really spotted by the Phoenixes, at least. Well, actually, I take that back. The Phoenixes are heading right for the dropship. I saw something blinking down there. So he must have killed like one unit, maybe a probe that was there on the map. Okay, so uh, Charge on the way and Archon as well. Second Forge is coming out. No Storm being upgraded as of yet, just using the Archons. The superior economy and production that he has to make a, a raw punching out power. These Stalkers got Blink and Charge is ready as well. Maybe a little bit too over eager to yeah. blink forward like that, but he only lost one stalker thus far. Not too bad. He's pretty lucky that we go don't have concast of shells. Done. Yeah. With that upgrade, he, he would, would have, have lost, lost three a to lot four. more stalkers. Exactly. So a bit overzealous here. I think he was skirting the edges of the army and trying to snipe a few of the medivacs, and then thought, well, if I blink forward, he's just going to try and run. 
But I feel he underestimated the Dami power a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it suddenly turned around and bit back. It's like, yeah, feel welcome to just jump in whenever you want. I'm just <laughs> going to turn around and take down your stalker. That's fine with me. Uh, uh, Fortigy is starting to kick his own macro into gear. Still, normally the turn is like 10, 20 supply ahead at this point. But because of the very early third and the favorable engagements, we still have a lead for San even at this point. But th that's good for San. 4GG starting with his Hellbat production. So if this was uh, one of the standard Protoss armies we saw, which is like 30, 50, 35 Zealots, that would be really, really good for 4GG because Hellbats just evaporate Zealots. But this is an army pretty well balanced. We've got an Oracle, some High Templar, Archon, Zealots, Flink Stalkers, Phoenix, and Colossus might be coming soon as well. Ah, uh, drop going straight into the natural. That's one cannon to slow this down a little bit. In the middle of the map on the other hand, the Stalkers are in trouble. Now Concussive Shell is done, and that cost a few Stalkers their life. He's still trying to position his army and a drop once more going straight into the main base where there's another cannon just waiting. And of course those Phoenixes that never really stop. Taking on the Oracle and even trying to snipe one of those Phoenixes might be able to do that. Nah, not quite. Yeah, if that Oracle had shot back, it would have killed all the Marines, but uh, he was too busy with uh, management in different bases. Unfortunately, lost that one. Would be really useful if he could still use Revelation now. And the difference here with 4GG and a player like Apocalypse we just saw, constant drops in this matchup. Apocalypse did very little dropping yeah. at all, and even 4GG against, keeps it up. Even against uh, the Phoenix, he doesn't hesitate. He just yeah. gets the drops in there. And it starts really costing him a lot. He already lost one medivac here. He might lose another one. The rest of the army is trying to move into position. He's really trying to spread Sun out thin with this. But so far, the Protoss player is a really solid defense. Both of them heading into 2-2, about to be completed. And here comes 4GG moving in with a stim. A nice force field so far by Sun. The Storm doing a bit of damage, but not enough just yet. The 2-2 about to be done for both of them. There's a small lead here for the Terran, already completing the first uh, uh, add-on. And there comes a good storm, but for Gigi with a really nice split, and he's doing so much damage yet that third, and completely zoning the Protoss play out. Yeah, we've got no more storms, and this is a very sturdy army here for 4 Gigi with lots of Marauders and Hellbats. Way more Marauder heavy than we saw earlier on from Apocalypse, with 22 Marauders to 33 Marines. Powering through this army here, 40 supply lead. There comes the final storm of this engagement. But no more High Templars, no more storms. So much DPS It's though. just too much stuff. This is crazy. I mean, 4GG is doing such a great job here. Takes down that third base and is still able to contest this army against storms and everything. GG and the 10th map win in a row at the tournament. Oh, yeah. Wow. Very nice play there by 4GG. Kind of took every disadvantage that he had in this map. He took it in stride, did his thing, got 200 supply, and uh, attacked. And he just punched through a brick wall. Yeah. Okay. 10 map wins in a row now. Undefeated so far at the Aces RG. What an impressive run. So crazy.